I will compare the basic wall adapter of SE to the 18W fast charger, and here is how I'm going to do it. Just like promised in my earlier video, I will plug a completely drained iPhone SE to the slow charger. I will set percentage marks like 20%, 50 and I'll drain it again and charge it with the 18 watt fast charger and hope we will notice a huge difference. I'm Lucas from Apple Fox and let's begin. The point here is that Apple officially claims that fast charging is supported on the SE. It can be found on the product description page of the SE on Apple's website, but it's not in the box. They wanted to save as much money as possible, I get it, it's a budget iPhone, but should you buy the 18 watt fast charger based on the results, is it actually worth it? But if you think about it and consider buying it, you should know that the adapter itself costs about $29 or 35 euros, depending on where you live, but you can get it from the Apple's website officially, or you can get it from Amazon for about 20 bucks or 25 euros. The link of course in the description. And also it's a USB-C adapter. So you'll need a USB-C to lightning cable if you don't have one already. Again, 35 bucks for two meters long cable. I mean, the costs really do add up. So this whole fast charging setup is actually not that cheap. So it really comes down to the question if you should buy it or not. Now the first mark or checkpoint, whatever you want to call it, is the Apple logo and when it actually shows up. So connecting the SE to the basic 5 watt charger, uh, don't mind the sticker by the way, it's something I just put it on, I mean like randomly, but, but now we just have to pretty much wait. And as you can see, the Apple logo pops up around the 5 minute mark, 5 minutes and 10 seconds roughly. Now let's try the 18 watt charger. Of course, I at first let it charge completely to 100% using the slow charger and then moved on to the 18 watt, like I had to drain the phone and um, make the battery go to zero and then charge it again. But to make the video flow a little better, I'm comparing it this way. So now the fast charger, again, plugging it and this time we don't have to wait that long. Around one minute mark, the Apple logo pops up, so it's actually pretty fast. If I do the math really quickly, it's about five times faster, and that's awesome so far. But editing the video right now, I can see it won't always be five times that fast. It will get worse, in fact. By the way, if you enjoyed this kind of content, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss new videos and you don't want to miss them. Also, like the video if you want so it moves up in YouTube algorithm and more people can find it and know the difference between the wall adapters so it can help more people. Now let's take a look at the second mark which is 15% and the slow 5 watt charger reached the 15% in the 18th minute. Not really impressive and especially right now we start to see and compare what it would look like in real life like if you have uh, about 20 minutes to charge your iPhone and it gets only to like 15-16% it's probably not the thing you would want or expect. But uh, yeah, just imagine waiting 18 minutes to get to 15%. Nothing really that enjoyable. By the way, the capacity is of course 100%, like it's a brand new device. Check out the unboxing if you want. And now let's take a look at the 18 watt fast charger. 7 minutes and some seconds when reach 15%. Like I said, not 5 times faster, but still nice. Like we have 10 minutes that we saved so far, and compared to 18 minutes, it's more than half. Now the 50% mark. Keep in mind that it's not that easy to catch it exactly when it flips to 50%. But 26 minutes using fast charger, it really outperformed Apple's claims. They said that 50% of the battery of the SE should be reached within 30 minutes using the fast charger of course, but we got it even sooner, like I saved 4 minutes, that's nice so far. And using the slow charger, it took one hour and two minutes. So like two times faster using the fast charger. And using the slow one after about 26 minutes, just to compare it, we had only 20%. 
And I want to say that, of course, I'm using the very same outlet, the same SE, the same device, pretty much same everything. So the difference is only in the charger. And we I tried to make it as fair as possible. So I don't think that anything else could actually have an impact on the results. And finally, 100% mark. So right now the phone should be fully charged. And as you can see right now, this is the 99% of battery charged using the 5 watt slow charger and it took us about 2 hours and 26 minutes so again not very impressive we will recap the results in just a minute and let's move on to the 18 watt fast charger and you can see right now i have 88 percent of the battery and it took us hour and six minutes to get here I of course wanted to show you the 100% mark, but I realized that I probably didn't catch it precisely at 100%. So it could already be charged fully for a couple of minutes and that could mislead you. So I'm only showing you the numbers I'm sure are precise. It would take about one hour and 26 minutes, I guess, or just about that time. So you, I, I think you now have an idea of how fast it actually is. Okay, so now the recap. Apple logo showed up on the SE in 5 minutes and 10 seconds uh, using slow charger and with the fast one it took about 1 minute. 15 minute mark has been reached in 18 minutes compared to 7 minutes and some seconds. So that's a nice result right there. 50% mark was in 26 minutes using fast charger and 1 hour and 2 minutes, which is two times slower than the fast charger. And finally, 100%, two hours, 26 minutes compared to about an hour and some, I guess, 20 minutes or so. So about one hour saved there. I think that these results are most definitely nice to know and to consider when buying the fast charger. So what's the bottom line? When it comes to the two chargers and nothing else, this is like no brainer the 18 watt is a lot better and faster than the one in the box. But considering its price, is it really worth it? And I'd still say yes, but some people just go for the SE because of their tight budget and that is okay. By the way, stay tuned for the original SE videos and comparisons because that one is still a decent value right now. But you need to decide if it's worth it or not at the end. You have to make the decision, but right now you have some results to help you with that. I want to say thanks a lot for watching and your support. If you don't want to miss future content and videos in the future, make sure you subscribe and also like the video to support it. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay safe and see you guys later in the next videos. Peace out, guys.